Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode in my Crossy Road tutorial series. Today I'll be adding the footprints to add a little bit of polish and the squish particles when you actually get hit by the cars. And of course that means that we're actually going to make it to where when you get hit you're not going to just keep going like you do now. And I'll be adding the score counter up top. So let's hop right into it. But before we do, I'd like to show you the costumes and sprites you'll need. So in the player I've added a new costume and it's just like a kind of stretched out version of our chicken. And then I have have a new sprite called footprint which is just two little chicken footprints and I've lined these footprints right up to the edge of these feet so if we copy the player into the footprints and paste it and as you can see it's just perfectly there so that way it'll match up with his feet and then I have a sprite called squish particles and it's just kind of a puffy cloud and then a particle pop then I have a score and this one's a little bit more tricky now this is hard to see that is because my text is white so if I make a background as you can see there's one and two three Three, four, and it goes all the way down to nine. Then I have zero and then a negative sign. That way, if our score goes into the negative from going backwards, you'll be able to see that. And I've named all these costumes according to what they are. So five is named five. So what we can do is go into the car and pull in this script right here, the when I receive update and then this go to right here. So basically now what this will do is forever go to a position, but it is automatically created two new variables car x and car y but i don't want them to be named car so i'm going to go ahead and rename this car x to footprint x car y to footprint y also i don't know why i named this footprint with a capital p now we can go ahead and get rid of this change size by and everything else is basically the same except the one thing is on this else instead of hiding it we're going to just delete this clone that way we don't get too many footprint clones when i receive start game i'm going to just set the clone to no. Then let's make a when I start as a clone and duplicate this and we're going to set this to yes because the clone is a clone. Then we're going to go ahead and set the footprint x, duplicate this, and footprint y to pull in this player x. Now this is just going to make it kind of stick to the exact same position as the player x. So let's add a little bit of randomness. Add a plus so it's player x plus. Then do a pick random 1 to 10 and change this to negative 5 to five just to add a little bit of variation then let's set the footprint y to player y that way it's the same y position next let's do a point in direction and do zero and make sure to click on the direction and set this rotation style to all around by clicking this arrow here then let's go ahead and clear the graphics effects of this guy set the ghost effect to 96 so it's basically all the way transparent then switch costume to footprint and wait two seconds so after two seconds let's make this fade out so all we need to do is repeat four times and then a change color effect by and change this to ghost effect and do one because we already have it to 96 so that's going to make it perfectly fade out then once it's all the way faded out let's go ahead and do delete this clone to make sure that it gets rid of it so when we first start you may notice that there's nothing there and that is because we haven't actually made our player spawn this yet so all we need to do is go into the player and find the if w pressed and do a create clone clone of the footprint right underneath the set smooth Y. So now we should see that when we move, there should be a little footprint and after a while they'll fade away. They may be hard to see in the recording. Hopefully you can see now that we have footprints that when we walk it just adds that little bit of polish. Alrighty, so now that we have that working, let's go ahead and make it to where when we touch the cars, our little chicken will actually be, it'll actually detect that. Thankfully this is super simple to do. Let's pull out a win I receive and change this to to start game and then do a forever loop here. Now let's go ahead and do an if statement and do an if touching. That way we can actually detect, hey, I am touching the cars. And of course we're going to do if touching cars. And if we are, then we're going to set the size to 50% because if you remember, it's going to basically make that shrink and then this algorithm will make it go back to 100 and then point in direction, pick random one to 360 and that'll make it rotate randomly, do a stop this script okay so here's a car as you can see it does the animation but then we can still move and it doesn't really do anything bad what we need to do is make a variable that's going to keep track of if we've lost so let's make a variable and name this game over that is going to be for all sprites next in the reset player which is this one let's set that game over to no so that way in the beginning it's not going to be there then let's show this game over and plop it up in 
in the corner. That way we can make sure that it's working. So when we start, it sets it to no. When we touch the cars, let's go ahead and set this to yes. Now once we hit a car or the car hits us, that's going to set that to yes. Let's go ahead and do another if statement around this if touching cars and do if game over equals to no. And now we need to go ahead and do that if game over equals no and basically put it around everything in our game so we definitely want it over the player jump so that way we can't move and the player strafe so this will prevent us from moving now what we don't want to do is put it around this update that is because this is the scrolling so if we're moving and we die it's going to go ahead and just stop all of our camera movement make an if else like this and put the game over no in there and if it equals to no then we're going to do all of that animation stuff but if it is equal to yes then we're going to switch costume to chicken three which is our poor little squash chicken and we're going to do a stop this script we're going to go ahead and take this wait pick random one to three seconds outside of this loop like so so now you should be seeing as soon as our variable goes to game over equals yes, our chicken should immediately stop, switch to the right costume, and we shouldn't be able to move. So let's go ahead and get hit by this car. And as you can see, the costume is not correct. Okay, and there it is. It took a little bit, but I am pressing the keys. I don't know if you can hear it. I cannot move. The first thing we can do is try to put that back in there because maybe that'll make it work. Okay, here's a car. Let's hope that we get squished immediately. And there we go. As you can see, we actually got squished immediately. That is the problem. So don't put that wait, pick random one to three seconds outside of the loop. Then another thing, let's go ahead and make it point in direction. Once it gets hit, not pick random one to 300, but instead let's make it go to 105. So that way it's not so random. It kind of it looks more like an animation. Okay, so it's still doing that where it takes a bit to do. Okay, so one thing you can try is saying if game over is equal to yes, then we're going to switch to that costume and immediately stop this script. Otherwise, we'll do the waiting. And we can also try doing a switch costume to chicken three on the if touching cars. Okay, and one last thing. Let's try to put an if statement and do if game over equals to no and put it underneath there like that. Okay, so let's get hit by a car real quick boom it immediately did that and it did not blink so now let's make this a little bit more polished when we get hit the first thing we can do is add some camera shake so let's click make a new block and name this cam shake like so and do not do run screen without refresh then let's go ahead and do amount as an in input to make the amount of how much we want it to shake now let's click ok and do a cam shake on the if touching cars right around here and let's do 25 now in the cam shake let's do a repeat 10 times and change this to a pick random and in that pick random let's do two to three times then let's go ahead and set the scroll x to itself scroll x then plus pick random one to ten except let's go ahead and do on the left side times negative one so it's going to do a max times negative one to amount say we set it to 25 is going to say anywhere between 25 and 25 times negative one which would be negative 25 and let's put that in there then duplicate that and do scroll y to scroll y plus pick random amount all of that stuff i didn't put the right variables i want to make sure that we do scroll y in this and scroll y in this i didn't do that right but now as you can see if we click on this as you can see it kind of just does a crazy shape so now when we get hit, we should see that there's a lot more polish. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. So if we get hit, boom. As you can see, there's camera shake and all of that really comes together and makes it good. You could stop here, but let's go ahead and take this a step further by adding some particles when you get hit. So let's pull in all of these scripts from the footprint into this. Then let's clean up the blocks so that way they're not all over the place. Let's go ahead and rename the footprints to squish particle x and you can go ahead and copy that and rename that to squish particle and just so you know this is actually making a new variable 
So if we go into footprint, there's still the footprint X and Y, and we click on the squish particles, and now there's squish particle X and Y. And that is because they are for the sprite only variables. Delete everything but these first three variable blocks. Set the squish particle X to player X and squish particle Y to player Y. Now let's make a brand new variable and name this particle velocity. Make sure you do for the sprite only because we are dealing with clones here. So now let's set the particle velocity in the very beginning to five and this is how fast it's gonna go. Then let's do a point in direction pick random one to 360. So it can point in any direction. Let's clear the graphic effects in the very beginning and set the size to pick random between 75 and 100%. Then switch costume to particle. Now here comes a little bit tricky part. Let's do a repeat 50. So for a normal particle, if you wanted to move in any direction, all you need to do is point in direction, pick random one to 360 like, like we did there. So say it points in 124. Then we're just going to do move 10 steps and it'll make it move in that direction and say it's negative 118 It moves in that direction. So that's pretty easy, but we're not dealing with X and Y here It's actually on the squish particle X and squish particle Y which means that we can't use this move 10 steps It just won't work. So we have to make our own type of move 10 steps So to do this we need to do a change and do a change the squish particle X and squish particle y by one and put those in the repeat 50 except what we need to do is do the abs of blank and change this to the cosine then let's do a minus and do 90 minus direction then we can take this times the particle velocity so that is for the x now let's go ahead and duplicate all this and all we need to do is change this to this one right here the sign and that is actually it so this right here is the exact same as a move 10 step. So if we take this particle velocity out and say it do five, it's going to just move five steps in whatever direction it is. So that is how we would make a move 10 steps with this change particle X and Y. Now let's go ahead and change the size by negative 0.1. So it kind of just gets a little bit smaller and change the ghost effect by one. Set the particle velocity to particle velocity times a smaller number. So let's try 0.93 so this basically is just a friction algorithm that'll make it get smaller and smaller so it starts fast and goes slow then at the very end once it finishes moving let's switch to particle pop which is this little poppy animation then wait 0.1 seconds like this delete this clone so it gets rid of itself in the player let's go ahead and do a repeat 10 times create clone of squish particles right underneath the cam shake and then a stop this script okay so here's a street let's go ahead and try to get hit and it's not there again what oh we did footprint oh my gosh okay we need to do the cars not footprint okay so now let's try it one last time and did we not do the right one? Oh my gosh we did cars why can't i do squish particles we literally did it wrong three times in a row okay so now let's try getting hit by it as you can see boom there is some nice particles and oh my gosh that is so satisfying those little dust particles are so awesome anyway now that we have these particles let's go ahead and add the score counter so that way we have a score to keep track of how fast we're going so let's make a brand new variable for this sprite only inside of the score sprite and just do the little number icon or the hashtag then let's go ahead and do a win green flag clicked and then a set that hashtag to one make sure it's one then do a hide so that way it hides the normal sprite and then do a repeat 10 times so it makes 10 digits create clone of myself then we're going to go ahead and change that little hashtag thingamajigger by one next let's do a when i start as a clone and a set size to 175 percent now let's do a forever loop and for now this is going to be good now let's go into the player and make a new variable and name the score for all sprites then in the reset player let's set that score to zero and then change the score by one every time we jump right by this create clone of footprint so now when we start we have zero score but every time we jump it will give us a new score but when we go backwards we can basically duplicate score because we can go backwards then jump up go backwards jump up and we can just keep getting more and more score even though we're not actually moving so i want to make the score change by negative one every time we move backwards so now it actually is fair because when we go backwards it changes it by 
negative one. So that is much better. Now that we have this variable for score, I want to make the score counter actually display it. So that way it doesn't look like this ugly variable. So now let's go ahead and do a go to in the forever loop inside of the score and do this number times 25. Then let's go ahead and take all of that minus the length of score times 25, then divided by 2 and plus 16. Then we can go ahead and put that in the right side of the minus and put that in the x and then do 150. So you may be wondering why is this looking different from the normal score counter I do. So basically how I normally have it is it is on the left side. So every time we get a new digit, say this is 9, so it's just right here. And and then once we get to 10, this one stays here and then there's a zero here and then it'll keep going to the right the bigger it gets. This score counter, I want it to be perfectly in the middle. So when it's zero, it'll be like right here. But then when it gets 10, it'll center itself automatically and stay in the center of the screen. So that's why this algorithm looks a bit different from usual. Now let's go into the player and do this change size by algorithm and pull it into the score and put this in the forever loop and change this to change size by 150 minus size divided by 3. Do an if else and do length of score by duplicating that one less than so do length of score is less than the number symbol there then hide otherwise show in switch costume to letter blank of blank and we're actually going to make it digit of score and now as you can see when we start it's actually going to switch to the right costume so really quick let's make sure on the when i started the clone point injection 90 but as you can see now it is in the center of the screen and it's matching the score so let's go ahead and move that down so you can actually see it but as you can see it's nine and that is nine and now let's here's the moment of truth hopefully it centers itself automatically Boom, there you go. As you can see, it's actually on the center of the screen instead of going to the right. So now let's set the score to something huge, like whatever that is. I'm not gonna try to read the zeros. And as you can see, it's still centered in the middle of the screen. And because we designed this little negative sign, as you can see, if we go into the negative, this actually says negative one or negative four, whatever it is. Now let's make a new block and name this look. And this is going to keep track of the looks of this block and it's going to be run screen without refresh. Now let's go ahead and put this change size by in there and let's do a little if else here and make it to where when the score is less than one it's transparent give a little visual indication so score is less than one in an if else like here then we're going to set the ghost effect to 25 percent otherwise we're going to clear the graphics effects it doesn't work yet because we need to make sure that we do in the look in the forever loop so now as you can see when we're in the negatives it's slightly transparent but as soon as we go into the positives it's not transparent now let's give this a little bit of motion let's make it go back and forth and wiggle a little bit a abs of again and change this to to cosine then let's go ahead and do the timer minus block then let's go ahead and do timer minus one times 200 like so and put that in the cosine so it's cosine of timer minus one times 200 then let's take all of that times six and then last but not least take this plus 90 so that way it's right side up so now as you can see when we start it actually rotates back and forth and just does a little tilt which looks nice so to let you know what this all these values do this one just makes it right side up so if we don't do anything as you can see it point in direction zero so if you do 90 it'll point in direction 90 so if you wanted to point and say 180 do plus 180 and now it points in 180 then this times six is how much it goes back and forth so right now it's six but if we set this to like 25 as you can see it goes back and forth a lot then this times 200 is how fast it does it. So right now it's doing it at a normal speed, but if we do like 500, now it's doing it really fast. So those are all the values you can go ahead and play around with. Let's make it to where when we get a score, it actually does a little snappy growing animation where it gets bigger real quick. So to do this, let's do a when I receive and do a new message and name this score. So this is going to play every time we get some score. Then we're going to go ahead and do a change size by 25. The player let's do the when we change the score by one right after that let's broadcast score so now as you can see whenever we get some score it actually just makes it a little bit more polished and satisfying to get some score so now we are getting a really nicely polished game now one thing you may have saw is that the score is behind the car so let's do a when i receive update 
and do go to front. That way it's in front of literally everything in the game because it is a UI element, which I do want that for. So let's go ahead and try it now. And as you can see, it's above everything. So I hope this tutorial helped you out. And if it did, then make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you all so much for watching. But anyways, this has been Owen and I am out. Thank you.